people and the experiences we share. This is Matt Stell Reports. We're launching this series of reports with a name that you've probably gotten familiar with over the last five or six months. If you're in or around law enforcement, you've probably known it for years. His new job comes with leading about 260,000 Lubbockites for at least the next two years. And while he knows he won't please everyone, he wants the city council to get back to being the board of directors it was intended to be. We'll see if he's successful in that. But before then, who is Trey Payne? Before you call him the mayor of Lubbock, there's another title Trey Payne would much more gladly prefer. There's nothing better than being a girl dad. You know, people say, did you keep trying so you could have a boy? And I said, absolutely not. Mabry is 21 and our second Grace is 19. And then we have almost 14 year old Hadley. And then uh, our, our caboose, Daisy Kate is uh, just turned 12. It's fair to say these girls probably never thought their dad would run for office and as you can expect it's been quite an adjustment for them. In the beginning they were the most flustered and confused about what what does this mean? Do we still live here? You know what will my friends say? Just all that kind of stuff and it it all just worked itself out by them being involved and participating going to some of the events seeing that it really is not that big of a deal. The 48 year old pretty much feels the same way. He's not big on recognition or a lot of pomp and circumstance, but what he's really proud of his humble upbringing about 45 minutes south of Lubbock. And I was born in Garza Memorial Hospital in 1974 and my dad had uh, been in the Navy and then he'd worked in the oil field for for years and then my mom pushed him to go back to school and he so he, he did he went to college under the GI Bill he became a pharmacist and he was a partner in a little small pharmacy there in post teasingly say that I was the one of the youngest drug dealers in post Texas because my dad would have us driving around on our bikes delivering prescriptions to people and you know helping it was a family business it's a great childhood you know I lived a block away from the elementary school walked to school most days a great place to grow up Great teachers, great education. Two older brothers had gone to Texas Tech, so you always, you know, good Red Raiders in West Texas, we go to Texas Tech University. Put myself through school. Uh, I was a resident assistant in the dorms, residence halls. I, uh, I worked uh, many different jobs from selling suits to working in the oil field, whatever we could do to, you know, make ends meet. Graduated in 1996 with a BBA in accounting. A degree that seemed like a practical one, but a yearning deep down inside to be of service to people. That led Payne to law school and then to a special someone. I met my wife, Heidi, uh, and while I was in Oklahoma, she was a working, practicing occupational therapist. When we were first dating and I really got to know him, I said, you should be in politics. You just, you just have a gift for that, I think. And he always just, you know, shoot me off or shoot off the idea. Turns out she was on to something. The newlywed couple moves back to West Texas and this new attorney eventually kicks off his career in the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office and in a few short years finds himself as the chief homicide prosecutor. A fascinating and incredible experience, especially when you're, uh, you know, a young guy and you're in your early 30s and now suddenly you're in charge of homicide caseload and the call outs and dealing with detectives and dealing with cases that, um, some things you just can't fully wrap your mind around, you know, some of the evil that we have and some of the horrible things that were going on in our in our city and our county. But after nearly a decade with the DA, Payne says it became draining and private practice seemed a little more appealing. So in 2009, he started his own law firm, the same one he runs today, along with representing the Texas Municipal Police Association. We deal with officers that, you know, if there's an officer involved shooting, if they are involved in, um, in an accident, a car wreck, a high-speed chase, anything of that nature, running code three or not, and, and there's something that could be either administrative or criminal prosecution against them, then we're typically called. It's a tough time to be a police officer. Uh, you know, there's, there's an expectation, and there should be high expectations on, on people that have that much power, uh, there, but it's a, di it's a difficult climate. So with his well-respected legal career, a growing family, why then decide to now dabble into politics? Let's be honest, a lot of people found themselves with more time to think during COVID, which I don't think was a bad thing. What do I want to be known for when I'm done? Is there, do I want to 
make a difference in my community? And the answer was always yes. I never really saw or had a, a calling for DC or Austin. I felt like maybe I could make a difference in my backyard. When he said it, I said, finally. And he kind of, you know, did that. And, and he said, what are you talking about? I said, I don't know. I just, I think we're on the same page. I've been praying about it too. I feel, I feel like it's the right time and I'm ready, let's do it. While campaigning was a new thing for the couple, their strategy was effective, their message to voters was clear, and the results back in May showed just that. One title Heidi Payne doesn't prefer, First Lady. Every time, even my closest friends or pe even people I don't know say that, I cringe for a second just because I can't, I don't know how to process it, but I'm, it's of course flattering, it's an honor just to be beside Trey at any point. I'm so proud of him, but no, I don't, I don't love attention in that way. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Sounds a little too fancy. So how do the Paynes plan to juggle the next 22 months? Well, first of all, we live on a calendar right now. <laughs> so if it's on the calendar, I'm going to show up. And you know, it's just, contrary to what I think a lot of people think, it's just, it's not as that bad. Um, if you're diligent in time management, then it's really good, and I'm, I'm home most every night. Honestly, he needs a place to rest, so I love that our home is that, and that we don't hash through every decision he's made that day or what he's come against. But we talk about it, but it's not all that we talk about by any means, because he needs an escape from that. And when he does have a break, you'll typically find our new mayor with his nose in a book or showing off his ancient Roman atlas. I read a lot. I read everything that there is to read from self-help books to sci-fi to fantasy novels of, you know, of futuristic things to history and biographies. I mean, he really is a nerd about the history stuff. Like he just, he can't get enough and he loves it and he's the dad that pulls over to every historical marker if we don't whine too much about it and gets out and reads it. Yeah, he's a big dork. <laughs> Thank you so much, Matt.